research and discovery. Futurists. Alarm bells are ringing in the world's museums as plastic artefacts in their collections have begun to decay. It's taken time, but people definitely now, I think, are beginning to care much, much more. This most modern of materials may appear indestructible, but in reality, it's quite the opposite. The chief problem with plastics is the fact that they're deteriorating, that they're self-destructing. Thousands of sculptures, iconic designs and historic films are at risk. This film is degrading, it's sticky, it smells strongly of acetic acid, vinegar. Paris and London are havens for culture fans. Vibrant cities that are home to many important museums and galleries. Their collections include objects made from plastics and the question of how to preserve them is now a pressing issue. Brenda Keenahan is taking part in groundbreaking European research into how synthetic materials age. Plastics are quite different from other materials in terms of conservation because they can degrade very, very suddenly. You can have something which looks fine you know, for years and years and then you check it six months after your previous look and it can be you know, really in quite a bad condition. So once that's happened, you, you really can do very little about it. The post-war years saw designers embrace plastic as a high-tech new material. Their works are now in museums like these Panton chairs, famous for their elegant lines, and the Colombo chair, the first seat to be moulded from one material, in this case, ABS plastic. This chair is yellowing. That is because of the chemical structure of the material. It absorbs the sunlight or it absorbs heat. It absorbs any type of energy and it changes the structure of the material and the material actually becomes darker. Some cynics may suggest that a plastic chair could simply be replaced by a new one that appears identical. But that's against the museum ethos. There's a contradiction between the disposability of plastics and the fact that museums want to keep things permanently. And that is, um, that is a problem. Nonetheless, we collect the original object, so it wouldn't really do for us to, say, take that chair, that Panton chair, of the 1960s and just buy one manufactured in the mid-2000s or maybe in 2050. It's not just iconic furniture and household designs that are degrading over time, but also films, cartoons and photographs. French scientist Bertrand Levedrine is working with colleagues across Europe to get a better understanding of how plastics deteriorate. Here's a series of cartoons, which are also called celluloid, which are used to make animations. The polymer is degraded, it's retracted, and so all the colors have a tendency to break off. One of the key questions is why the same plastic sometimes degrades in different ways. In the same family of polymers, certain ones can degrade faster than others, and we don't know exactly why. We have cartoons, celluloids, which have been very well conserved over 40 years, and then others in a cupboard alongside, which are very badly degraded. We don't know exactly why. Corrosive acids, yellowing colours, crumbling surfaces and the overwhelming smell of vinegar. Analyzing ageing plastic isn't always a pleasant experience, but it's important to build a picture of how different polymers discolour, distort and degrade. These artefacts are all from the 1950s. These are actually just unstable materials and even if they're kept in really brilliant conditions, they probably will degrade. 
this rubber oxidizes and basically that means it's just working with the air the air actually attacks rubber and so it becomes you know all brittle and flaky and things like that pvc is affected by the um, by light where the doll was wearing clothes you can see she's probably more or less the same color as when she was made but where she's been exposed to the light she's actually got really really dark and also i don't know if you can see she's actually quite sticky and this is the plasticizer which makes her flexible is actually just physically coming to the surface and she's, a, she's just really sticky. The science of preserving plastics is still in its infancy. Bertrand is leading a series of experiments to understand how the chemical structure of plastic changes over time. Voilà. Here in this room we carry out accelerated aging tests using light and heat. This foam has spent two weeks at 90 degrees centigrade and 50% humidity and is already yellowed and fragile. The objective is to understand in what way the temperature and the heat accelerate aging and how we can, through processes and protections, slow down the natural aging of these objects when they are on display in museums or outside. Artworks on display also have to be cleaned and maintained. Again, plastics can be tricky. Many polymers are highly sensitive to cleaning solvents, including water. There's also the risk that a plastic object may release chemicals that could harm other materials in a display cabinet. It's a new challenge in the world of museums. A lot of work has been done on the degradation of plastics in things like the building industry and what happens is they replace them. But in a museum context you're actually doing something quite different. We don't want to replace them, we want to try and stop it happening, we want to try and reverse it, but reversing it I'm afraid is impossible. So basically we're just, we're just trying to see how we can slow it down. This is a huge problem because a large part of our cultural heritage is either on film or in the form of photographs, but equally in objects made of synthetic materials which can deteriorate. So that represents culturally a big part of our heritage. The first steps in developing methods to analyze, protect and eventually conserve polymers are being taken. It may be that plastics are the ultimate symbol of a disposable society yet many do deserve to be preserved for posterity.